in what will go down as one of the biggest leaks ever to come out of anything that we'll see for the longest times. In fact, we'll probably never, ever see something like this ever again. The FTC, in their bid to try and prove themselves as worthy, as the righteous, as the ones who are telling the truth, the ones that are trying to protect Sony as a consumer, they have decided that they accidentally are going to go about and leak all of Microsoft's trade secrets to the internet without any remorse. At this point, I think Microsoft, and that from what I've spoke, seen online with Florian and other lawyers that are now airing their opinions, Microsoft are well within their rights to actually take legal charges against the FTC, and the FTC will well and truly be screwed. Because what they've done here is essentially not only leaked the information, this is IP theft that they have taken from Microsoft and leaked without their permission. So... Biden, who has endorsed the FTC and the appointment of Lena Khan, is now within this situation of uh, conspiring for IP theft, for trade secret theft, and for all sorts of information. This is really, really bad. And I do hope with all sincerity that Microsoft now with the FTC turns the tables round and goes on the full offensive and sues the living shit out of them because the FTC are a bunch of assholes because doing something like this in any other industry and you can kiss your career goodbye and it should be the same for the FTC. They should be fully held liable for this and I really hope that Microsoft goes with them with everything they've got considering the power that Microsoft hold. This would be nothing for them. But since the information is out, let's have a look and see what we're looking at. So over here, as you can see, we've got the Brooklyn Xbox Series X refresh. Now, this isn't a new version of the Xbox in terms of like a mid-season refresh. This is basically the Series X with digital only. There is no disk drive. It actually looks really nice. It's cylinder looking almost uh, Apple-like, right? Um or like a big Alexa subwoofer. Brooklyn will deliver 4K Gen 9 console gaming. Oh no, they said 4K. Oh my God, now Reforged Gaming is going to be all over this as well. Same as uh, that uh, Dreamcast guy. Oh my God, what have they done? Uh, with more internal storage, it can go up to two terabytes from what I've read. Faster Wi-Fi, reduced power, so it's easier on the environment. A more immersive controller. We're going to get to that because that controller is damn sexy and a beautiful redesign that elevates the all-digital experience of the Xbox ecosystem, giving our fans more to love. Beautiful and innovative new design, more internal storage for games, 2 terabytes. there it is, USB-C front port with power delivery, nice. All new power immersive controller, we're going to get to that. Same great price, $499. Now, I'm, I wonder if this is going to be a... Uh, two terabytes with 499 or if the two terabyte version is going to be higher. I think because the drive is missing, I think they're going to actually give you that two terabyte drive for the same price. That's actually a pretty sweet. For those of you like me who are pretty much full digital anyway, uh, this is actually a really decent uh, option if you haven't got a Series X yet or if you're just looking to upgrade. Updated technologies, all new Southbridge to modernize IO and sustainability efforts. So there's been some refresh inside in terms of just how the machine, you know, transfers data, Wi-Fi 6E, radio for better for output, so better Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth 5.2, radio for improved accessory, I think the current one supports 5 or 5.1, 6 nm die shrink for improved efficiency, improved sustainability story, reduced uh, PSU by 15%, new low power standby mode is 20% of the current Xbox Series S standby mode, wow, increased use of PCR on housing, to over 30 percent 100 percent recyclable packaging pretty sweet pretty sweet this over here xbox gaming at xbox series launch so this is how it started low mid pc consoles high-end pcs can play xbox games and in terms of accessories you had the headset you know kind of like the one i've got now you've got the core controller and you've got the elite controller which is pretty sweet this is what we have today. You've got browser gaming, Android mobile gaming, smart TV gaming. You've got the low mid PC, as you would expect. 
You've got third party streaming sticks and set top boxes. So like the Amazon Fire Stick, Google TV that allow it. Now the cloud device, which was already um, has been announced and that's what it looked like originally could be coming soon considering we're seeing it here because it's not yet available. You've obviously got the consoles, high end PC, and of course the cloud blade, which is basically cloud gaming. And again, you're looking at the bottom tier, the accessories haven't changed. Now this is where it gets really interesting because the top hasn't really changed except for one. Can you see it? It's this one over here. We've got handheld gaming. Now I don't know if this is referring to like the Steam Deck or are they actually gonna come out with their own handheld? I mean, this is really, really, I, I mean, I'm interested. I am really interested because I love these handheld consoles. I've got a Steam Deck myself, but if they can release something like this that will, you know, digitally play native games, Holy crap, that would be actually insane. But I think it will, uh, I don't want to get carried away because I do think that this is referring to stuff like Steam Deck, but still knowing that this is like there is, is interesting. But now we look at what they're looking at beyond one hand controllers for accessibility, mobile controllers for like tablets and stuff like that. We've got the standard uh, controllers. We've got a premium controller added here that they're looking to introduce later on. And of course, gaming keyboard and mouses that they're looking to add as well to make it an all encompassing play anywhere type of experience with anything you want. That list there pretty much covers every form of gaming that you could want and increases the accessibility for your Xbox games anywhere outside of the PlayStation ecosystem, I guess. Now this is the launch times, timelines that they had. So for fiscal 24, you've got the Sebel launch. This is the new controller. It's launching at $69.99. And then you've got the Xbox Gaming Beat in June, which is pretty cool. And you've got the mid-gen console announcement, which will, uh, which is for Elwood and Brooklyn, announced simultaneously uh, and in July. Then let's see what's going on here. You've got the Elwood one terabyte launch in September. So this is the end of like a, this is basically 2024, 2025. Uh, Elwood one terabyte launch is at 299 in September. In November, around my birthday, you've got the Brooklyn two terabyte launch at $500. Additional storage options announced available in fiscal year 25. Uh, I guess that's second quarter. You've got a 60 day plus separation between launches, enables dialogue with different audiences, allows us to focus on new improvements in Seville, tell stories beyond console DNC, adds value to Brooklyn and Elwood at announce, gives Elwood its own moment earlier in the holiday timeframe to maximize sales. Last chance ED 512 gigabyte at $200 as Black Friday offer before end of life. Starkville end of life ahead of Brooklyn launch and Brooklyn arrives just in time for the gifting season, but separate from Elwood. This is, you know, I, I believe the Brooklyn one is the one that's going to be pretty much the cylinderish one at two terabytes. Gaming devices path to 2030. Console business is the foundation, so consoles aren't going anywhere. Consoles are considered a key health meter for the brand and will continue to drive majority of revenue and subscribers. New endpoints are the path to 100 million members. So they're trying to get 100 million uh, Game Pass members this year. So unlocking new off console endpoints and improving the experience will substantially grow subscribers over the next eight years. Controller becomes the hero. The new Xbox controller is the only thing you need to play on every device. This low barrier to entry will fuel subscriber growth. So what they're doing here is going for that Stadia Amazon Luna approach where the controller just connects to whatever you've got. And I'm assuming it's going to collect like YouTube's uh, Stadia. When you powered up the Stadia controller, it connected to the satellites and then to your nearest thing. And that gave it like amazing low latency. So from what I'm guessing here, they'll probably do something very similar, but the controller is basically going to be your hero that connects to everything, your consoles, your phone, your browser, your PC, your tablets, everything. It will just connect to it and you can play. The controller essentially is the core part of your console. Personalization and customization. Personalization and customization continues as a hardware strategic advantage and key profit driver and customer delighter and sustainability and accessibility. Continued progress towards reduction of carbon tax impact, re-energizing our journey of inclusion. Cohesive hybrid compute, our vision, develop a next generation hybrid game platform capable of leveraging the combined power of the client and cloud to deliver a deeper immersion and entirely new classes of game experiences 
optimized for real time gameplay and creators, we will be enable new levels of performance beyond the capabilities of the client hardware alone. Now, if you remember quite some time ago, we had Crackdown 3, which was supposed to harness the core platform and the actual uh, cloud platform and enable you to do stuff real time in game that the current hardware simply cannot do. And then it would utilize the hardware from the cloud to enable to do it. That quite didn't work out the way they planned it. And because that vision kind of didn't work, it kind of worked in the multiplayer online a little bit, but for what they wanted, it wasn't possible. And when I was speaking to some of the Sumo Digital uh, developers back then, because I actually knew a couple that actually worked there, they were telling me that they were having a lot of problems in actually getting this, you know, the whole structure working properly. But if they can actually get that working, then the possibilities of what they can do is no longer limited or defined by the box. The box can do what it can do, but if the developers themselves want to utilize it that bit further and go beyond and go to the cloud, that is where they can pull their extra resources in, the extra horsepower to be able to do that and deliver the quality of gaming. What does this mean? There's two sides to this, right? Number one, what will happen if you don't want to utilize the cloud gaming structure? Will the game work without it? I'm guessing it has to, otherwise it's kind of screwed. But if it doesn't, then it is going to be an always online game that requires you to be online in order to be able to utilize this. Kind of like how we have live service games today with like Destiny and so, so forth. It will be similar to that. Is it great? Who knows? At the end of the day, I know how people feel about always online and you know, game preservation. Hopefully they'll take that into consideration and have a version playable on disc that might not utilize those extra horsepowers that's coming in through the cloud, but can still, you know, enable you to play the game in its basic form. Uh, create strategic decisions and investments, uh, silicon in Q, uh, Q1 cycle 23. So you can see there, they've got all of this stuff coming in, CPU, ARM 64, X versus 64, balance of big and little CPU cores and so forth. Graphics innovation, next gen DirectX ray tracing, dynamic global cooling, global illumination, sorry, micro polygon rendering optimizations, ML based super resolution, extensibility model for faster iteration and innovation and fin OS lacking fin OS for less than a hundred dollars consumer or handheld devices. Maybe this is going to be the time when they actually bundle a version of Windows with the console as well, accessible through the cloud. This is something that I've been saying would actually give Microsoft a massive leg up in the gaming industry because combining the hybrid together, just so you can do your word processing and stuff like that, it doesn't even necessarily have to play PC games. Just, you know, going online to be able to check your emails, you know, do your word processing, access Microsoft Office and whatnot. For a student or for someone that's just doing basic stuff, it's amazing. That would actually, in my opinion, be such a great change. All right, now we come to the important controller, Sabil. Now this actually looks really sweet. I really love the design, well, the color design, and you can pretty much guarantee that that white bit there is gonna be fully changeable in terms of color, so I'll probably go for a red one. But the world's best controller now playing on a screen near you. Ubiquity, play anywhere. Xbox Wireless 2, Direct to Cloud, Bluetooth 5.2, Seamless Parent Switch, New Mobile App Features, CPAD Devices and Cloud, Managed Devices and Accessories. So it's going to be very similar to how the Luna and uh, St uh, Stadia controllers worked in terms of pairing. Immersion, Field the Game, Precision Haptic Feedback. So they're finally getting haptic feedback. Insane. I mean, Phil Spencer was a massive fan of the PlayStation controller. He always spoke highly of it. So it's good to see that this is actually coming to an Xbox soon. VCA haptics, double S speakers, nice. Accelerometer, quieter buttons and thumbsticks, finally. Sustainability, do good, feel good, rechargeable and swappable batteries, nice. I'm happy with that. I don't want it to just be internal only. If I want to be able to change the batteries, that is good. Give me the option. This gives options. Recycled materials and less resin, repair and disassembly, durable and reliable, new modular thumbsticks, improved longevity, continued build improvements. The key here is modular thumbsticks, which means you can, you know, if you get drift or anything like that, you can change the thumbsticks and just put a new one in. Really nice. That is the way of the future. Approachability, engage and delight. If you lift it up, it wakes the controller up and I guess connects to your nearest device. 
Familiar Xbox feel. Same ergonomics as Merlin, which is basically the current controller. Same layout and activation forces. SE, LE, and XDL options are expected. Now, obviously, we're now wondering what loads SE and LE and XDL are. This is where it comes in. So we've got the mid-gen devices lineup delivering on player needs. So you've got the Xbox Series S, which is Elwood, Xbox Series X, which is Brooklyn, and the Xbox Series X in XDL, which I don't quite know what it is, is called Uffa. And then you've got the controller, Sabil and Igraine, again, in XDL. Now, as you can see here, it says delivers 1440p. So expect, you know, the likes of Reforge and Dreamcast Guy again to come in with their guns blazing, of course, because they've got nothing better to do. Uh, it's got 10 gig of RAM. I kind of hoped that if they were going to do a refresh, but I think this refresh that they're talking about here with Elwood is the Black Series S. I mean, it, it has to be, right? But maybe not. Maybe they're actually releasing another version of this. Um... Again, it's all digital. There's two physical storages, 512, one terabyte. It's got the Xbox Wireless 2 for connectivity. And for connectivity, in fact, that pretty much goes across the board along with Bluetooth 5.2, Wi-Fi 6E is just standard. Uh, the Series S has three USB-A ports, whereas the Series X has one USB-C and two USB-A. And that is the same for the Series X in XDL. The rest of the inbox accessories are pretty much the same. Now, when we look at the Series X and XDL, they are pretty much identical. It comes in up to two gigabyte, two terabytes worth of storage with 12 teraflops plus 4K with 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is really interesting stuff. I'm really excited to see where this is going because, you know, handheld controller, all digital Xbox, they're not actually improving the actual power of it, but if the power consumption goes down, then it could possibly actually pump out that bit more, right? And we come to like the title release schedule for games. You've got console PC and free to play mobile, Fallout Shelter, which is already out, Project Whirlwind, uh, Doom Eternal and DLC, Elder Scrolls, uh, Fallout Wastelanders, Deathloop, uh, 21, we had Starfield that was supposed to come in 21. It was actually supposed to come because uh, Todd Howard wanted to release it, but you know it wasn't ready. And then they wanted to release it in 22, but then realized that you know it still wasn't ready and Phil forced them to delay it to 23. So you can see where this was going. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online is fine. Redfall, Doom Eternal DLC, Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, Fallout Worlds, which is Fallout 76, and Project Hibiki, which might be Tokyo. You got Indiana Jones game, which was supposed to release last year, but obviously it's been pushed uh, out again. Oblivion Remaster, which is interesting. Another Elder Scrolls expansion, pretty much a yearly thing. Starfield DLC, which will probably now go to 2024. Uh, 2023, we've got Doom Year Zero and DLC. So that's pretty damn sweet. We've got another Doom coming. Project Kestrel, which is new. Project Platinum, which is, again, two new projects there that we don't know anything about. Again, Elder Scrolls expansion, uh, fiscal year 24, and I guess going forward, um, the Elder Scrolls 6, which I guess is not coming in 2024. They've already said it's going to be minimum earliest 2026, but expected like 27% potentially. Uh, Project Kestrel, whatever that is, has having an, was supposed to have an expansion. Licensed IP game, Fallout 3 Remaster, another expansion for Elder Scrolls, a yearly thing, I guess. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo sequel, Dishonored 3, um, Doom Year Zero DLC, which I guess will now just be the Doom Year Zero. Really, really cool stuff. You've got also like uh, free-to-play mobile games as well. Project Ubu, Project Wanderer, and then a bunch of unnamed titles. But it'll be interesting to see what this Project Kestrel and Project Platinum is. But really cool stuff coming from Cab Xbox. Again, a lot of information coming out, and a lot of this is pretty damning on Microsoft because... This stuff really shouldn't have been coming out. It's giving Sony the upper hand that they need because now they know what to expect. But you've got the mid-gen uh, fiscal year 25 to 27 scenarios, and this is what they hope to do. Uh, they live a full Fairhaven vision, new storage options, refreshed ID, fully featured Sabil bundled in. That's the controller. Three-year volume, they're looking to sell 29 million. And by uh, fiscal year 27, they're looking to have 59 million out there. Uh, in terms of controllers, 
they're looking to sell for 80 million, which is reasonable. I guess if you've got like uh, people do buy two controllers at the end of the day, they buy an extra controller to have in the house. Um, I know I do. So that's not unreasonable. Uh, limit Fair Haven investment, free year, they're looking at 25 million. Uh, fiscal year 27, MAD at 56 million, which is again minus 3 million. Um, and as you can see at the bottom right, paired down Sabil, feature shave to GM percentage, no elite business, Delphi end of life service 25, and limited attached to cloud endpoints. Again, they're looking at potentially uh, 56 million down 24 million, and they're looking at a uh, three year GM 1.1 billion. But there's, there's just so much news coming out at the moment, and I'm going to try and stay on top of it. But this is crazy. The new Xbox refresh, what do you think of it? It looks nice. I really like the controller as well. I know it's an all digital, so that's not going to appeal to a certain faction of people. But Xbox has been going like digital for a long time. And they've been pushing that full digital for the longest of times, especially now when you like buy games, especially especially early on where they had a smart delivery, the Series X version of the game wasn't even fully on the disc. You had to download it and then actually install it. So they've kind of been pushing this for the longest of times when it comes to the Xbox. And it's no surprise that they're finally doing this. Now, will the uh, all digital one, obviously this is going to be at 500 bucks with two terabytes. So it's going to be the same price as a one terabyte Series X. Will that still be on sale? Will the Series S eventually be replaced by the all digital version at one terabyte? Who knows? Uh, if they do that, maybe they'll offer like an upgrade path for people to be able to trade their Series S's in, pay a little bit extra, and get the all digital uh, Series X for maybe like a hundred or two hundred bucks on top. Who knows? Maybe they'll offer that as a service somewhere down the line. But right now, that's all I've got for you. Lots of information. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's see if we can hit that 250 likes and I'll see you in the next one. Remain legend.